Judge Hatchett is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touch. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Manny Brooks is suing his ex-girlfriend Dana Williams in the amount of $14,479.12. Mr. Brooks claims Ms. Williams lied about him being the father of her child, so he would cover her mommy makeover expenses. You're suing the defendant. How do you know her? Uh, Your Honor, she is my ex-girlfriend. Uh, and, well, it, it didn't end well. It did not end well? No. That's always a story in my courtroom. When I have an ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend over here suing, you know, it's always a story. Judge, it just didn't end well. So how did you all meet? Tell me about the relationship, and then I'm going to get to why you're, just, why you're suing her. Uh, we met about two years ago uh, at a club in Atlanta. I don't normally go, but I did this day. Uh, for whatever reason, I did and I saw her there. Of course, as you can see, she's very gorgeous. And so, you know, I stepped up to her and I asked her if she wanted to dance. And then after that, one thing led to another. And we started, you know, talking a little bit. After we started talking, uh, find out a couple weeks later she's pregnant. Now, I don't know about pregnancies at the time, you know. I'm like, so hey. clearly you all were doing more than talking. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit more. I mean, you weren't you know. just talking and dancing. You all were doing more than, I mean, if you know, a couple weeks later she says I'm pregnant. Yeah. Then clearly this was a relationship that became intimate very quickly. Yes. Let's just keep it real here. <laughs> okay. All right. So a couple of weeks after you all started seeing each other, mm. she is pregnant. So you all meet in the club. Talk to me about this initial encounter from your perspective. Yes, Your Honor. Well, I was hosting the club that night, and Manny approached me due to the fact that he follows me on social media. That's, in turn, what I do. Um, social mm -hmm. media influencer. You do what? Social media influencer and model oh, as well. Oh, influencer. Mm -hmm. Social media influencer. All right, go ahead. And model as well. So we struck up a conversation. He's a really nice guy. And at the time, I was on and off. I've been on and off with my ex-boyfriend since high school, but Manny was different, so we definitely connected in more ways than one. All right, so you all started seeing each other, but you had been on and off, as you explain it, mm -hmm. with your ex-boyfriend, and you all had been on and off since you were in high school. So this has been going on for a while. Very much so. So yes. now you all connect, and two weeks later, you tell him you're pregnant? It wasn't two weeks, it was about a month, but that's not, that's not better either, but it was a very short period of time. Very we, short period of time. We jumped into it. He was definitely a not a rebound, man. but a, a positive distraction from my situation with the ex. All right, so now she says to you, I'm pregnant, and what was your response? Uh, at first, you know, I had hoped if it was mine, uh, that it would be, but I, I didn't believe it at first. You know, we hadn't been together that long. We only, you know, we only had sex a couple of times, so. Only takes once. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, so did you ask her that? Did you say, listen, is this my baby? I did. I did. And what did you say? That conversation never happened, Your Honor. It never happened. That's a lie. We were very, very much together 85% of the time. So he initially, when we found out, was very surprised, as was I. So I went to him, you know, as everyone would, so what do you want to do? He asked what, it, what was I thinking as well, and due to the fact that I didn't really want to, you know, abort, we decided to have the child. So the question of paternity didn't turn up until after Isaiah was born. Wait, 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 wait. This is a new relationship. And it never came up? It never came up until after I had the child. Oh, it did. It came up. Because we brought up the ex-boyfriend a couple of times, actually. Did he talk to you about the ex-boyfriend? It's hard for me to this. believe that it didn't come up. 
That's what I'm having. Right. I'm really having a tough time believing that. Right, but he also wouldn't have stood up and been there if he had any doubts either, which is why I'm telling you the truth. As far as this goes, it was he was concerned about the ex-relationship only because he didn't want to go any further with me if it was still on, but it was very much off. I once found out, when I found out I was pregnant, it was only Manny, and that was just what it was. And he had trust and faith in me, and the paternity didn't, didn't come up until after he saw the baby, and he was like. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. She says she hasn't done anything with him, so maybe it is mine. It must Stop be. right there. Did you say that you had not been involved sexually with the ex-boyfriend? I never told him that, Your Honor. You never told him I that? I never told him that. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Manny Brooks, who is suing Dana Williams for an unpaid loan. Two very different, different, different stories in here. So now, what was your attitude during the time that she was pregnant? Were you supportive? Were you excited? I mean, tell me what was yeah. going on. Uh, I was very much supportive. You know, after, after we did have the conversation about the ex, which did happen, uh, you know, I, I thought about it and I said, well, maybe it is mine. You know, she says she hasn't done anything with him, so maybe it is mine. It must Stop be Stop right there. Did you say that you had not been involved sexually with the ex-boyfriend? I never told him that, Your Honor. You never told him that? I never that. told him that. It's so different. <laughs> this is very different. All right, so then what happens? So uh, after the conversation about all that and I decide, okay, it must be mine. Uh, you know, I decided to man up, do what I need to do. So anything she needed, I tried to support her. Is that true? Uh, it is. And, okay. you know, we tried the, the relationship thing. We actually decided, okay, let's try and do it. You know, we're going to have a child, then, you know, let's actually try to work it out. Um, from there, uh, we just continued, you know, day-to-day -day stuff. We had separate housing, though. Um, but if she needed, like, money for bills and stuff like that, I would help her out. That's true? Yes, it is. All and, right. And um, then the baby came. After the baby came, uh, it was maybe about three months in or so, uh, I had finally just, I'd had enough, you know, family folks telling me, hey, you know, the baby doesn't really look like you. You might want to check into that a little bit more. Um, yes, Your Honor is actually, not to cut him off, it was actually six months. Okay, so the baby's here, mm -hmm. and people are saying, wait a minute, this baby doesn't look anything like you, Manny. And what was your response? My response, and that was six months, not three. Um, I was taken aback, but I understood. He wanted to go. I did put up an argument because I was offended. Um, Why were you offended? Because he made it seem as if I was possibly involved with more people than the possible ex who we had already discussed. So he's like, who have you been with? Like, this baby don't look like me, da 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 you know? I have, a, I have a strong nose, all of this extra stuff. So um, I was just, I was offended, you know? And, um, but I, I ended up saying, okay, you wanna go, let's go. Well, let's, before we get to that part, before we get to the part about getting the baby tested, because people are saying to you, wait a minute, Manny, this baby doesn't look anything like you. I think you need to find out whether this child is yours. The reason you're in my courtroom today is because you're suing for more than $14,000. Tell me why. So around the same time that I was getting those rumors, uh, I guess you want to say rumors uh, from friends and family, saying, hey, the baby's not sure, it's the same time that she had got the surgery done. What kind so, of surgery? Uh, so the surgery she got done, she got a uh, tummy tuck. Um, I believe she got maybe some breast augmentation. And uh, I think there was something else. Um, did you have some sure. surgery done? I did, yes, sir. And, what, wh and why? 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 Why was it necessary for her to have the surgery? Well, she said she wanted to make sure she, you know, still looked about the same because of her social media influence. Uh, she noticed that when she was pregnant that her social media followings, they kind of went down a little bit. And because I wanted to make sure she had everything she needed for her job so she could provide uh, for a child, um, I made sure, okay, if you needed extra money for this, I'll help you do that. And when she presented the surgery to me, I said, okay, how much do you need? And then from there, she told me what she needed. She went for the consultation, and then we went and got it done. Now, also, you mentioned that you were a model. 
Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so this is not just the social media piece, mm -hmm. influencer, mm -hmm. but you you earn a living by being a model. Yes. And so the idea was that you needed to have the surgery to get back to where you were before you had the baby. Right. All right, so what was the understanding about this money for the surgery? Uh, well, during, I want to say, my second trimester, that's when I started to notice the following just plummet. Um, there were no more um, sponsorships being handed out to me, um, so I voiced my concern as well as funds started to get a bit lower, and that's when he stepped in and helped me out whenever I needed him to. And I, I mentioned, yeah, you know, once I drop this baby, like, I really need to do, like, because I'm no exerciser, let's be honest. So I said, I want to... I want to just get like a mommy makeover. And so you like, want a oh. mommy makeover? Right. And he said, oh, I got you, you know, so just let me know. And I was like, thank you, you know. So um, once I had Isaiah. So we're talking, we're talking a major mommy makeover. We're talking $14,479.12 right. to be exact. Right. I was a boat. So it, it took that much to get me down to size. So. Um, when Isaiah was three months, I went in for the consultation, and that's when the procedure happened. All right, so now, why are you suing her for this money today? So I'm suing her because the money was, it was a loan, in, in my opinion, it was a loan. I told her that, you know, I would give her what she needed so that I could help her with, you know, her business, her job. Um, I didn't say, hey, I'm, I'm just giving you the money. I'm saying, hey, I can help you out with this. And it was under the impression that this child was mine. Coming up. You never raised the possibilities with men. It wasn't like you hadn't seen your ex in six months or six weeks. You had just seen him. And so the question really becomes, did you set him up? The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Manny Brooks, who is suing Dana Williams for an unpaid loan. What happened when you went and had the DNA test done by Isaiah? What happened? So uh, when we went and did the test, they found out that Isaiah is now my son. Um, yeah, you know, it hurt because, you know, I started to form a bond with him. And, um, you know, that, it just, it, it stirred something in me, and I realized, mm -hmm. I almost felt like I'd been played, you know? And when he asked you about your ex, which I believe, I can't believe a man in this situation didn't ask you about your ex, that you basically said, oh, no, mm -mm, no, 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 no. But clearly, clearly, you had been with somebody in very close proximity to the time that you were with him and that that's who got you pregnant. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you say, listen, Manny, let me tell you, you know, I've been with somebody else, I'm with you now, and so this may not be your child. Why not say that? It wasn't like you hadn't seen your ex in six months or six weeks, you had just seen him, right? And then, a few weeks after having been with Manny, you say, I'm pregnant. And so the question really becomes, did you set him up? Coming up. It's been cordial since, has it? Cordial? <laughs> Only when I see Isaiah. Only when I see Isaiah. So you still have a relationship with him? Yes. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Manny Brooks, who is suing Dana Williams for an unpaid loan. You played him. You got pregnant by the other guy. And you probably didn't know exactly who got you pregnant at first. I didn't. But you didn't do what was right to tell Manny this may not be your child. Because if you'd done what was right, you would have had Isaiah tested the minute that child was born. You played him. You played him. And had he not asked for the testing, which then you got, quote, unquote, offended by, you know, he'd still be assuming that this child was his. And you knew in your heart of hearts that there's a possibility that it wasn't. That's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. And what do you say to Isaiah when he's old enough to understand all of this? Because this is the only father he's known. So, Manny, what's happening with you now? And I'm getting ready to rule on this case. What's happening with you now? 
Well, now I'm just trying to make sure my employees are still getting paid everything, you know, with the loans, how they were set up. Um, it took a toll on the business. Um, and what kind of business do you have? Uh, I have a custom auto repair shop. What do you have to say to him today before I rule on this case? What do you have to say to him? I've said over the last few months to a year, Your Honor, how appreciative I am of him and how deeply sorry I am for the time invested, for the, the heartache, for everything. It's been cordial since. Has it? Cordial? <laughs> Only when I see Isaiah. Only when I see Isaiah. So you still have a relationship with him? Yes. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. You're a good man. That's the right thing. Thank you. You're a good man. You're a good man. Well, you have to live with this. I think you set him up, but assuming for a minute that you didn't, you didn't tell him the truth. And that lie created all of this. And that's what I need you to understand. That lie really, really changed everything. And that's what I need you to understand. He deserved better. He really did. And you gotta live with this. I am gonna enter judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $14,500. I'm gonna round up the few pennies here. Should do a little bit more than that because the interest is accrued. We're going to do a straight $15,000 for the plaintiff. Under these circumstances, you owe him the money. I don't care how you get it. Go out and get a loan. Go mortgage, whatever you have. But this man is going to get $15,000 because this was not right. And there's nothing further. We'll stand adjourned. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $15,000. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $15,000. Manny, from the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry for everything that I've done to you, and I'll make sure that you get your $15,000 paid in full as soon as possible. I accept your apology, and I'll always be there for Isaiah.